Hello everyone, today I thought we would take a look at some very basic uh, system commands just to see how we can run other processes from inside of Rails. This is something I've covered before, uh, but you know, I kind of only covered how to run Python scripts. Of course, there's more you can do with it. And I thought it might be funny if we could just try and see if we could spawn a second Rails server inside of our main Rails server. So all I have here is a bare bones Rails app. It just has a single controller, which is our pages controller with a home action. And if we go ahead and come up to our controllers and our pages controller, you can see it's just an empty action. So the first thing I want to do is just show you how to echo something to the console, because I feel like this is a good place to start. So of course, by default, we can do something like puts hello world and we can try to print that out to our, our terminal and that'll appear. Uh, but that's running through our Ruby uh, code. And instead what I'd like to do is have this run as like a just regular old echo command. So of course, if you're on a, a Windows, it's gonna be different, different setup, but here we can just do a system and then we can call whatever uh, function we want to. So in this case, it's gonna be the echo function, which takes in a string. And then we have to pass in the actual string of hello world just like we we just had it and by doing this it'll then uh, pass in this string to our system command and this string has the echo command inside of it which will get evaluated and then that'll have the hello world inside of it so now if we refresh we still get our hello world here it's just being printed out in a slightly different way of course the next question is could we take this and store it in a variable somehow well, of course we can, we have these back ticks and inside these back ticks, we can do something like echo and then hello world. And then we can uh, actually close out these back ticks. Let me clean up my code a bit. So we're just gonna be passing this in in the same way that we just did. And now if we refresh, we still get our hello world appearing here from our uh, echo, but this isn't going anywhere. So with this, what we wanna do is we'll just take this and we'll uh, store this inside of a at output variable. We'll save that and then we can do puts um, at output maybe. And we can just see what the at output is giving us. So if we run this, we now get two different uh, hello worlds. So this right here isn't actually, uh, it, it's not printing it out in the same way. What's happening is our, our echo command is being evaluated, so we get hello world back, but then it's being stored inside of this little string here, which gets put inside of our at, out, our at output, which then allows us to use it. So of course what we can do, instead of putting it, we can go into our pages controller and our home action, and we can just do something like a h2, which is just gonna print out our at output. So we expect this to have the same contents as whatever we just ran here, but it'll get put inside of this neat little variable. So of course, we're not just limited to echo commands. We can also you know, take this and instead of doing echo hello world, we could do uh, let's echo ls. And we actually don't even need to echo the ls. I don't know what I'm doing. So if we just put ls in here and then we refresh, it'll give us the entire contents of the directory of our Rails app, which of course we can verify on the side here is just all of this nonsense. Uh, it's only gonna be the top level uh, stuff that's in, in the folder. Okay, so that's pretty neat, but what else could we do? Well, because we're running these commands, your brain's probably already uh, you know going wild with ideas, but we could do something kind of silly, like maybe we right click, new file, we call this like hello, world.py and this is only going to work if you have python installed on your system but you could do something like print uh, python sends its regards maybe you're watching the new game of thrones show uh, i don't know why i'm putting a semicolon there so by doing this we can then come into our pages controller and instead of doing our ls we could do something like uh, let's run a python 3 script and pass in hello underscore world dot pi. So now if we run this, this should get put into our output, which should get printed to the screen, which should match this text. So let's go ahead and refresh, and we can see Python sends its regards. Now, of course, this needs to finish being evaluated before the Rails app can continue in this setup. So if we had something like a, uh, 
5,000 times if we had something like that and then we just print out the loop or whatever. Uh, let's not print this out. Let's just do something silly like I plus one. So if we did something like this, it has to iterate through 5,000 of those, it's probably gonna take a little bit longer to do this. Uh, maybe we need to up this to 50,000. So now what's, what's hopefully gonna happen is as the number gets higher and higher, the Rails app starts to take longer and longer. So maybe we do something like print test and we reduce this to, I don't know, like 5,000 times. All right, I guess it's just running that quickly, but um, let me do 50,000. I'm hoping to at least get it to wait a bit. It looks like maybe the amount's going up here. Uh, let's go up to 500,000. Yeah, 141 milliseconds. So it's not scaling as well as I would like it to because I didn't really put any thought into it, but you get the idea. The more you do in your script, the longer it's gonna take for your Rails app to respond if you're running it like this. Now, of course, if you're not familiar with like Ruby threads, I'll have a link to a Ruby guides uh, that sort of describes how to create threads. Now, if you're not familiar with threading at all, then I would be tread very carefully. This is going to allow you to run these processes in a separate thread, of course, which means that you can run them parallel to each other. So you could spin up, let's say you had like an image classifier here, you would just spin up a separate thread, have it go run the image classifier while your Rails app continues doing whatever it needs to. But of course, you always want to be careful when you're playing with threads because it's evolved the headaches that come along with them. Now, the other option you have is you could do something like a fork and we can just try that real quick. And the reason why I'm bringing up a fork specifically, and I have an article on that as well uh, somewhere, we, uh, we can use these to create our Rails app. So we actually, we're gonna stop this the server. We're gonna CD out of this folder and then we're just gonna do a rails new second underscore app and then that'll create our second rails app and then we'll try to run this from inside of our original rails app not because we should do this but just to see if we can do this and i think we can so we're going to cd into our second app run a rails g controller we'll call it the second controller with an app action uh, oops second controller with an app action just so we have different text to see and then once we're done with that, we can actually CD out of here and CD back into the video. We'll run a Rails S and exit a full screen. Now that we have that, what we can do is below the system, we'll just create a fork. Now the fork does take in a block, which means it's gonna be reformatted to a do block. So I should probably just fix it right now because my formatter doesn't like these. There we go. So we have our fork with a do block. We can call EXEC. And the reason why we're doing this is I think without the fork, it says uh, that it will exit out of your process if you, uh, if you don't use the fork. So XSEC would in theory stop our Rails app, which we don't want. What we instead want to do is we want to run a command similar to our echo, but instead we're going to run a CD command. We'll CD out of our current directory and into second underscore app. Uh, and then we'll do double ampersands with a Rails S. And because this is already running on port 3000, we'll want this to run on port 3001, which is what, dash B, or maybe it's dash P, dash P 3001, that looks good to me. And then we can just throw in an exit here uh, and we'll see what happens. Let's come into our Python script and let's get rid of this printing 5,000 times stuff. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll refresh and we'll see what happens in our terminal here. And it looks like it did actually start up a second server. So the first one's running. So let's try this. Let's go to localhost port 3001, which is just has no home page. So let's try to go to, what did I call it? Slash second slash app. And there we go. We have a second Rails app running that we spun up inside of our first one with absolutely no regard for how ridiculous of a premise this is for <laughs> for a project but I guess it's cool to see that you can do things like this which I mean at the end of the day of course you can because this is just Ruby code and you know you're going to be doing stuff with Ruby code to begin with uh, but it is always funny to sort of get rid of some of that cognitive dissonance when it comes to like Ruby and Rails and seeing that you know at the end of the day your, your controller is just a, a Ruby file where you can do some silly nonsense like this 
But yeah, I mean, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you like now understand how to how to run other processes and stuff. Uh, it's only a couple commands. Your fork and your exec is going to be helpful if you're trying to run it as like a, another process, not in the same in the same thread. I think. Uh, and then you also have the ability to run um, your your threads if you'd like to, and the ability to sort of uh, store your outputs if you need to. So again, I've been using the, the battery example recently. Maybe you wanna get the battery level of your laptop, so you run a command like this, store it in the output, and then you can put it on your, on your web page. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.